topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Wednesday, hump day, and welcome to Triversity Talk. I am Wendy Stewart Kaplan and our co host. I am Simone Krauss. Welcome, everyone. Great to see you, Simone. What's going on in your life? Well, I had the opportunity to film a little lunch kiki scene with two of the drag queens from uh, We're Here and their two proteges, which was really exciting. But the best part was before we walked in, one of the drag queens and their protege, being the drag mother, tapping her fingers on their chest and telling them that they needed to practice their dance routine more. And just a maternal, <laughs> just a maternal instinct that came out of the, the drag mother to uh, to them. It was. I was lucky that I got to observe this without them realizing that I was watching it. It was memorable. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. And everybody needs a good drag mother, right? Yes, in, they do. In, We're in their lives. Family. Yep. Well, uh, speaking of drag, uh, this Friday night we did a, a wonderful fundraiser for New York Model Society. And um, the prince fra who descended from Kangas Kong, his name is Prince Stephen, and he's from Mongolia. It's Prince Stephen from Mongolia. Okay. And we had a Marilyn lookalike contest, which was really Really great. So everybody that was in the contest, I think there were 10 contestants um, dressed like Marilyn, look like Marilyn, channeled their inner Marilyn. And, um, I, you know, I just love it. I never did Marilyn before. So I just I love putting on that wig. And, you know, I drew the beauty. Everyone had the beauty mark, too. If you're going to do Marilyn, right, you, you have to have the beauty mark and the whispery little voice. And I lip sync to Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. Wasn't that Marilyn's song, right? <laughs> that she got yes, so was. by. So um, I, I really said to Simone, I said, we're not going to talk about ourselves so much tonight, even though we love to, because I'm very excited about my guest tonight. She is a brilliant photographer of transgender, gender fluid, and gender variant people in the community. She has a body of work that would knock your socks off. We are talking for books, permanent exhibitions, museums, universities, and libraries. What does all this do? Beautiful work like this helps to raise awareness and advocacy. And that is something that we've all become very, very much aware of, especially in the transgender community. So let us all welcome Marriott, Pathy, Allen. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful introduction. Well, thank you so much uh, for being here tonight. We're very, very excited to have you on our show. Um, I'm just going to dive right in and ask the question that I'm thinking about, because I've read everything about you. I've looked at your photographs, which are going to be a real treat for people tonight, because we've got the photographs from some of the books that we're going to show you. But how, how did you get on this path? I know you have a background in photography. You went to the University of Pennsylvania. That's right, where I studied painting. <laughs> there you go. I didn't even offer photography in those days. Right. So um, I had taken a few courses with a man named Harold Feinstein, who was a fabulous teacher and artist. But the way I, I got into the trans community was total fluke. I was in New Orleans for Mardi Gras uh, in 1978. 
And uh, I, the last on the last day, I came down to breakfast with my camera equipment, and there was an amazing group of crossdressers. Um, you know, Lee's, Lee Brewster's Mardi Gras boutique. Were, that's the connection there. Oh my gosh! Of course. Yes. So um, after breakfast, they the group went out. There was a swimming pool right there, outside of the dining room, and they they started lining up on the, at the swimming pool. And I think it must have been Lee started to take pictures. And I thought to myself, "Well, what would happen if I took a picture?" So I. Um, was courageous enough and picked up the camera and looked through it. And um, there were um, nine people. And in the middle of the group was somebody that was looking back at me. Or is the other? What you just said differentiates from what most people know or how we can even explain it. You got right to the essence. And that's something that people can't get to. So that's your special gift. Go on, please. Yeah. And so when I looked at, at her, I also said to myself, I have to have this person in my life. And it turned out to be Vicki West, who lived 20 blocks away from me on the Upper West Side. Oh, my God. And so it all was, uh, it seemed to make sense altogether, you know. And I went to play, I went wherever Vicki was going on a social level. And finally, to Fantasia Fair, which is an annual yep. um, event. And that's where it really all came to place. I, I became uh, the official photographer there. And I gradually went to more conferences, met more and more people, met people out of conferences. I mean, it was, uh, it was a joy. It was very exciting. I, was learn I learned so much not just as a human being, uh, but also as a photographer, because it became uh, a job that I happily jumped into, photographing trans people. Primarily it was cross-dressers in those days. Right. There were so many <laughs> photographic things I had to learn. Um, so would you like me to keep going on this? I can't, oh, yeah, we go your, on your story is quite amazing. So um, this would have brought you then ultimately to your first book. Am I correct? That's right. That was made in the 80s. Um, it took me, <laughs> it came out in 89, right before 90, just wow. at the last minute. And it was a, such a story, finding a publisher. I went through 50 publishers to finally get one, it would happen every time there would be an editor who liked it, but the marketing division would say, no, it's not going to make any money. They would say, uh, they had, what are we going to do with this? I'm, sh I'm sure we have no idea yeah. what to do with this. Although there's one company, and I know you would know it too, that would go out on a limb for that. And it's flying out of my head right now. And I'm going back to the 80s because they would publish books like that. And I can't remember the name of it. It'll come to you also, but um, it's a hard, it was, especially in the late eighties, a hard market. And also I'm gonna backtrack a little because the, the terminology we used back then, right? Tran, tranny, um, cross-dresser, the, the terminologies were very raw and very different, right? From now, because no one knew how to quote unquote categorize back then. Well, you know, the word um, transvestite yes. uh, was very common. And the idea was, I mean, a lot, house dresser was the word that was considered respectable. Right. It's really a direct translation from the Latin. Uh, but um, calling somebody a cross dresser was considered very good. It was um, acceptable and appreciated. Um, tranny or uh, other were, was not. Right. And um, so. It definitely derogative in those days, certainly, because I came out of the club scene. 
I had friends that w had transitioned already in our twenties. Okay. Yeah. And, um, the word, uh, tranny was very derogatory. It always referred to the girls that worked like on the West side highway, right? Sold the cars. Uh, it referred to people that were quote unquote tranny chasers. So it's a, a very different time when you started doing this photography. It was, it, I, it, and you know, one reason I wanted to show you a range of my work is because most people I think, in this day and age seem to be only interested in the very early 80s or the 80s because it seems exotic to them. Okay. But, but one thing I wanted to say is that I have continued steadily till now. I mean, so Amazing. I wanted to show you sort of more of a range of my work than the earliest material. And maybe well, that's not as interesting to people. I don't know. I think, I think whatever you're going to show us is interesting. And I think that is the perfect segue. One, if you can um, get Marriott's pictures ready, that would be great. I mean, your range is amazing. Whoops. Whoops. The bottom is cut up. She's cut off. Um, oh. The never. There. Okay. There. Thank you, Juan. <laughs> fixed it. You fixed it. Good. Uh, so this is the cover of Transformations, my first book. And um, what I liked in this picture was we had a table that was had a mirror. And so Sherry is reflected in the mirror. It's like a tarot card to me. Yeah. Because if you turn it upside down, you see quite a masculine looking person. But with Sherry, uh, with it this way, you see a very feminine person. And so um, I enjoyed that. Um, well, we're going to continue. Next. Okay, this is um, one of my all time classics, I guess. This is Felicity, who lived in Brooklyn, and she is in her living room. The photograph on the wall is of Felicity as a little boy with his mother. And the picture was hidden in the attic. Uh, you know, that's the way they dressed little boys then. It wasn't anything unusual. But when, as a teenager, Felicity came upon this picture and it brought back to her memories of what it was like to wear a dress and the wind blowing the dress around and the, the pleasure that she felt. And that's when she started cross-dressing. It's very interesting from that time. Wow. Yeah. Um, next. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at you all. That's so yeah. funny. I've seen both of you plus the picture. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is Paula and uh, daughter Rachel. It's a beautiful and, picture. Thank you. Uh, I love it myself. And I noticed afterwards that it, it's in the form of a heart. It's in the shape of a heart, which is yeah. appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to, I mean, okay, let me, let me dwell on this for a second. One of the things that I wanted to accomplish in my work was to include partners of trans people and children if possible yeah. and under the best of circumstances photograph them at home in their own environment and um and to find essence yes as you said before um so i felt extraordinarily lucky um paula wrote me a letter and she asked do all of the um, cross-dressers in your book have to be straight? And I said, absolutely not, because um, she was divorced and was interested in men at the time. So, next. <laughs> um, this is uh, Valerie, photographed on the dunes in Provincetown. 
we had been doing a sort of playful fashion shoot and it started to get cold in the afternoon. I often like to photograph people when it's cold because it, it creates a certain intimacy. So this is Valerie at the end of a long day of shooting. And she had um, grown up with a, a father who had ter tuberculosis and never touched her. And when I saw this picture, of wow. when she held it, it was like she was holding it. She was like a little girl holding a teddy bear um, for warmth and for love. Okay, next. Beautiful, wow. So these are three of the pictures in my dye transfer portfolio, which is available for purchase uh, through Brian. Um, the second, this picture is the cover of my second book, which is called The Gender Frontier. And this is Kiwi, uh, who was, who graced the cover. And in that book, I wanted to expand beyond uh, cross-dressers. Not that I wasn't photographing other people during that time, but the focus of the book was um, cross-dressers. So in the gender frontier, I wanted to include um, the political movement, which was developing very well at that point. Youth who were getting um, involved in, in all of it, and female to male that I hadn't covered at all, at all. So it, Gender Frontier is kind of full of different kinds of images. Wow. And Kiwi represented um, a group. She went to NYU and she had friends at other campuses. And um, they call themselves um, the fluids. The fluids, as in gender. The, flu the fluids. Yes. As if they were, as if they were a, a music group or something. And right. the, the gender fluids. Um, yeah. When when was this picture done? When was this image done? Um, in the, I guess, maybe the mid eighties. Sorry, nineties. In the nineties, because yeah. like you know now, um, the the most common used terminology for most of my friends who are in their twenties or it is gender fluid, okay? And that's just, everybody refers to themselves in this community as that. That's interesting, well, I had no idea in the 90s that people were using fluid. Well, Kiwi was a, a, a real leader. And first of all, that she would choose the name Kiwi. Right. <laughs> um, I love it. None of her friends had regular, so-called regular names. And um, she was, I'm saying she, I don't have to say she, but I certainly can't say he. And they or them is too difficult uh, for me at the moment. So anyway, it's cool, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on. So, and I have worked on a number of films and um, this is one of the, um, one of the best experiences I had. This is Carissa and Maxwell. They are a double, a double cross couple. Okay. Yeah. So male to female and female to male. Exactly. Got it. And they were a very loving couple. And as you see, their dog was embarrassed and was walking up. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't walk up. But anyway. <laughs> um, I wanted to bring them in, first of all, because of the diversity and because they were wonderful people. I, I enjoyed a lot of time with them. So it's a beautiful, sensitive photograph. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, what could you do when the people are lovely and wonderful? You try to do your best for them. And but you have to, to have them. a certain way of seeing and a kind of empathy that many people you can be a brilliant photographer and not have that empathy and when you shoot people you objectify them you're the people that you shoot there is such an authenticity and a love that comes from the actual image it's beautiful well thank you that's what i i mean my 
the feeling right from the beginning was that I was on their side. Yeah. And that I was uh, maybe more than an ally. I, um, I became an activist with them as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I love, I love that it's black and white. It really kind of really grabs me. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Most of the rest of the pictures are going to be in color. <laughs> but I used to photograph in both black and white and color and then sort of choose what I like. So next picture, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, this is um, just one picture to Brandon represent, represent the political activity in the 90s and the beginning of the 2000s, I would say up to maybe 2010 where a lot of the activity was very direct. This is at the Gay Pride Parade, at where in, in two, I think it was 2005, there was a big fight going on between uh, the gay and the transgender community over drag, over drag queens. Where, where do they deserve to, to march? Where should they march? It, are they to be considered just gay, or are they to be considered um, gender variant? But this has nothing to do with that. This is about the murder of Brandon Tina. Yeah, I remember that. Wow. But what this is about to me is also about chess, depictions of chess. Um, okay, next, please. This is, I'm going to show you a few pictures from Trans Cuba. Love it. Few oh, pictures, girls. transcendence, <laughs> and then a few very recent pictures of mine. So this is the cover of my book, Trans Cuba, and um, the people that I came to know, uh, wonderful people, uh, very different from any other street work street workers that I have met, because they would. They were not drunk, they were not on drugs, and they were fully there. Um, they may not have wanted to do the work, but that was how they survived. That was the only way they could survive in that culture, really. And what's interesting is that it, some of them had had perfectly fine careers as men, but once they transitioned, they were not allowed to continue to practice in that field. So if you were a lawyer, you were not a lawyer once you transition. Let me ask you something. Is it still that way in Cuba? Yeah. Well, I mean, the last, my book came out, it came out in 2014. It's still that way in Cuba. Wow. Well, I mean, it's, it, yeah. I don't think it would be any different. Right. Um, they, there was, they had a, a heroine, uh, a hero, in Mat Mariela Castro, who was um, Fidel's niece, who is Fidel's niece, even if he's not alive. And she had um, a, a building that was focused on helping LGBT people. But her favorite people in the group were always the trans people. The trans women, and I met very few trans men. Um, and it, her organization is called Senesex. Um, what does it stand for? Well, tell us what it stands for. I can't, um, I don't, I don't get, but I can tell you what it is, but I yeah. can't tell you what it stands for. Um, but one of the things that they have that is so moving is an annual parade uh, called um, uh, it, against, it's the week against uh, homophobia and transphobia. Phobia. Wow. And there are cultural events for the whole week in different parts of Cuba and everybody in, in wherever it is participates. I mean, from little kids to grandmothers to anybody, and there's music and dancing and sculpture and art, and it's fabulous. We don't have anything like that for gay pride. No, no, we absolutely don't. We have lots and lots of parties, uh, but nothing so, you know, culturally oriented. 
I mean, and that's partly through Mariella, who, I mean, I just, I can't tell you how much I um, am impressed by her and appreciate her and everybody else too. I, I just, she's Castro's niece, you said? Yes. Amazing. Her father was president at the time, Raul Castro. And she was in charge of cultural affairs um, in Cuba. And, but her, but, and she was a sexologist and uh, she loved to be, she, I felt like she and I were on the same trajectory. Right, right. So next picture, please. Um, this is Nomi and her boyfriend from that time. And Nomi um, managed to finish high school, which is a big feat when you're trans in Cuba because not only do the other students, but the teacher um, make fun of you. And so Nomi managed to finish high school and she had a grandmother who kept telling her she had to learn English. And Nomi really did. I mean, she was my translator most How of the fabulous. time. Wow. <laughs> and a wonderful person. Everybody was so, what was so striking to me, everybody had a great sense of humor and was very intelligent. Um, and Nomi was, is a great example of that. I mean, she was the only one who really spoke English. Right. I understand some Spanish, but you know, I couldn't hold a conversation. This is for us a window into a whole other culture. I'm curious, and um, I'm gonna ask you this now, from the people that you met, um, transitioning there, did people have surgery or? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> they, 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 once a year, there was a boat that, with Dutch doctors who oh would come God. and do surgeries. And there was a long line of people who wanted to uh, have that done. And, um, it was really, it, so there were very few people who had surgery. Very few people that could get surgeries. What about their ability to get hormones there? Um, they could get hormones. They could get hormones. Yeah, they could. But they had to wait for the Dutch ship to come in to get surgery. Yeah. This is absolutely incredible. They could get a breast implants in Cuba, but not the um, surgery. surgery. No. Right. So, okay, next. This is Malu, who considered herself the most famous trans person um, in Cuba. <laughs> and she's standing, uh, she's a fantastic character. Um, these people are all written up in my book in, in um, Trans Cuba. Malu is standing in front of the house where her parents live. And that's her sister, and she has, in uh, in addition, um, how many? Three, yeah, three brothers, um, and her parents were Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh my gosh! Yeah, she grew up in a very difficult. She left home at sixteen, and but now her parents are pleased with her. <laughs> she's she's been very helpful. She's, she's one of the few people who's been able to make money. She's very brilliant in street smarts. Yeah. And um, she's managed amazingly well. But I should leave Cuba and go on to... Um, it, it's hard to leave Cuba because this is so fascinating in another culture. You know, we only uh, think about transgender here in the United States, right? Oh, we yeah. have all the different Right, Simone, all the issues, what people go through politically, the surgeries. I mean, I could just go on and on. Now you've taken us to another country where it's a whole different thing. I mean, yeah. the Dutch, the only, you know, the only way to get surgery is when the Dutch boat comes in is just mind boggling. Mm -hmm. Well, Cuba, you know, we've been so, uh, what can I say, bad with Cuba. And now, and once Trump came to power, it was going going better when Obama was there and um, boats and there was a lot of traveling and 
a lot of tour boats would stop there and they could make some money. Right. But, after, but once Trump came in, he closed the door. Yep. And, and no, no, no boats, uh, no tour boats not, could uh, land there. Pe- nobody could visit Cuba. And so um, they, they were in very bad condition. And they still are. I mean, people are not visiting the way they were. I mean, no, not at all. They had opened up and then they yeah. closed under that they, administration. Yeah. And, yeah. They, they didn't get footing back again yet. Yes. Well, truth, truthfully, a lot of them are starving. Oh. They're it because, it, well, there's just a lack of food. And I, um, participate with a Puerto Rican agency that's based out of Chicago to literally send food to, uh, to Malu is the recipient and she is, she's taken it upon herself to prepare the food and the, the trans, the trans people come and eat what she prepares from what is sent from this Puerto Rican organization. Wow. So we should go on if I can fit this into 15 minutes. Oh, okay. you're very good. Oh my gosh, we're in Thailand now or Burma. Yes, we're in Burma. And this is the cover of my uh, Transcendence Spirit Mediums in Burma and Thailand. And um, this uh, spirit medium is possessed. Um, it all these festivals, there is possession by um, this by the spirits of the spirit medium. So the spirit mediums, once they come out of being possessed, they have no clue as to what has happened or anything. But, but while they're possessed, they're able to give messages to other people. Um, and so um, a spirit can be good or can be bad. It's not necessarily wonderful. A spirit can, t- can tell somebody, um, yeah, it's a good time to uh, buy a house or no, your daughter is too sick. I mean, it's, it can be either way, um, but the way that they get this information is through the meet the spirit medium, um, and at festivals um, they very they go on for a very long time. It takes I guess it takes a while to uh, to get absorbed into that environment. Um, please. Uh, next picture. Oh wait! Before hold on one, just go back one. Wait, I, I have to ask you this. I have a lot on this. Um, the spirit mediums are they female, biological female for the most part? No, they, they used to be primarily biological female, and they're still um, many. But now they are also gay men and transgender. And transgender. Uh, yeah. The and, actual spirit that inhabits their body could also be male, female, or... That's or, absolutely or, right. Or both, it be, yeah. Yeah. It could be somebody known traditionally, uh, or... Uh, I mean, if we had more time, I would show you what's... Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like. But right. also, they have to dress beautifully. I mean, the, the gay men, the trans... Um, uh, everybody. So I would say with her, um, she's trans. Um, yes. And um, they're so, so beautiful. But she's one of those. She is beautiful. And she's conducting this. And you can see the population of the villages around are there listening and participating, and including young children. And some of these festivals are pretty scary to me. Yeah. People, when they're possessed, they can throw themselves on the ground. And, and I mean, it's very powerful what happens to people. I'm not talking as much about the spirit mediums as, say, somebody from, from the, I don't want to say audience, but from the population that is there can suddenly 
uh, get possessed. And oh, when the first I'm totally, time, I've been in Haiti, I've been in Africa, I've been a part of this. So uh, now, but I don't know anything about Burma or Thailand, so this was very interesting. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Um, at first, when I saw people do, I thought, "Where's the Where's the nearest hospital? What are they doing?" <laughs> <laughs> and then I kept yeah. seeing it. I said, "Oh, oh, I understand now." Okay, yeah. next picture, please. Beautiful. So this is another. By contrast, this is another um, event of the. Now the doll, the money that you see hanging from her, offerings. You know, they are for the spirits. Yeah, offerings. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, I suspect that that's how the spirit mediums survive, because they have to survive somehow. Right. Um, the the spaces where these uh, rituals take place are are beautiful and wonderfully decorated. Um, the artist, the artistry was. I mean, the fabrics, everything was so amazing to me. I loved it. Okay, next. So this is in Thailand. And this is an example of somebody who has just gotten possessed. They have usually um, a long piece of fabric attached to the ceiling that you can hang on to when it's very powerful. And that's what's happening to this person. Uh, I focus on the on the festivals and the events because it, in showing you here, I do have quite a few pictures also. Oh my gosh, I'm regular sure. life. Okay, okay, we're we're almost done. Um, let's go on to my recent pictures. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. This is a couple in Paris, and uh, he would be somebody that. You, indefinable and she is a, a trans woman um, and they are in, in a you know very strong relationship they live together they're they're lovely people um, yeah next please so I don't know if you've heard of Zachary Becker She's, I don't know who, no, I don't know who Zachary Drucker is. She's very famous at this point. She's a very beautiful, very intelligent person. Who, well, you might have seen her. Um, she's worked on um, a Transparent. Did you see that? No, I'm familiar with it, but um, no. that would have been a place where anybody would have seen Zachary Drucker then. Okay. Yeah, she's very, very well known. She um, is making another movie about um, the what was called The Walk on 14th Street on the west side. You had already mentioned it. Um, yeah, it, it, and that's her boyfriend, whose name is Marvel, and he's a female to male. And he created this piece of art, which shows Zachary when she was having her face, her facial surgery. And he made a piece of art out of it, which I love. Just beautiful. Isn't it? Yeah, he's a talented artist. Um, uh, next, please. And this, this is them. <laughs> um, the, they were, um, we were playing um, um, John and um, what's her name? <laughs> Is John um, Lennon and Yoko Ono? <laughs> yes, I lost her work, her name at first. I got it for Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So there's a, a quite a famous photograph. I don't know if you are familiar with it of John Lennon lying naked on top of Yoko Ono. I, I yes, I know the photograph you're talking about. Yeah, so wow. so they're playing it. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, the same couple. But, same couple, uh, right? They're wonderful. And, and next picture, please. This is Susan Stryker. I don't yep. know. If, yeah, you know, you know who yep. she is. Yeah, exactly. The writer, transgender history. Yes, exactly. Yep. 
she's and she's an academic she's been she's taught at every major college you can think of and she has as you see um tattoos she has a very um she has tattoos in many places and i wanted to make sure i got it in with this is the backdrop at her in her home and she's very politically radical and I don't know if you can say radical anymore, but she's very political. She's and, political, yeah. Yeah. No, I meant the word radical. It sounds so, it almost sounds stupid now. But um, anyway. Um, a beautiful woman with the soul of the devil. The poster's amazing. Frankenstein yeah. created women. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next. Um, this is somebody I got also a photograph. These are all from the last year, year or so, so that you know I'm still alive and working. <laughs> Stop. Anyway, this is John, female to male, in case you couldn't tell. And he is a like he works as a librarian, and every day he he likes the cold water, he goes swimming in this oh, private, sort of private beach where it's mostly gay men um, who swim there. Anyway, another, he was recommended to me by, um, to get to know him by Jameson Green, who you must have heard of. Um, and um, it's a great, he's made, I've made a new friend with him. I really, we really like each other. That's and funny. I hope to see him again sometime. Okay, next. Is there a next? No. Oh, wow. next. No, did I do it in 15 minutes? I, that, I, that was amazing. And I wanted there to be a next because this is what a, a trip you've taken us on. I So this is what's been going through my head through the whole thing because you've been doing this for decades. Yes, I have. From when you started to now, what what has changed within oh, your process and the people that you're shooting? That's a biggie, Mariette. But yes. It's enormous. <laughs> enormous. But you can break it what down. Has changed, what has changed? Uh, I mean, it's been a huge ride. It's, um, it's been. I mean, when you say that, it's of course we're talking about such a range of people, and the crossdressers that I knew uh, in the eighties were full of guilt and fear, and they were always asking each themselves. Why am I like this? There were people who grew up and thought they were insane. There were people who um, thought they were evil. Um, it, you know, I can't tell you what, on the other hand, because there was no internet, right. when people met each other and spent time together, there was so much emotion, relief, joy, uh, friendships, and, um, it was so moving because these would be men who had jobs like, I don't know, truck driver, police officer, CEO of a company, air, airline pilot. They were masculine kinds of jobs that I, I didn't meet any artists when, with the cross dress and one architect. But the group that I got to know, they were all, you know, serious males as men, I mean, many had been in the military. Um, often it was to prove to themselves that they really were men, that they could be men. A lot, most of them were married and had right. children mostly. Uh, I, I always looked for wives that were uh, available to participate and that I could speak to about it. Um, so those, that's the population. And a few courageous people would go on radio and television programs and would be, I mean, most of the people, I helped find people for some of these. And I would always try to get them to promise that they'll treat the people right. Absolutely. But very often they did all kinds of shenanigans. I mean, I would say Donahue was the nicest. Well, that that's good to know because I always thought he was a nice guy. That yeah, yeah. 
But um, there's, I mean, some I really got to hate, because, but that's not important. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to gossip those about na those names. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to bother. But it, it means they could be, they could meet so mean and so stupid. Yeah. And, and they would um, sort of try to, in, to inflame the audience, um, you know. And, anyway, they, these were very courageous people who would, be willing to go on radio and television and right. much to be admired um, for doing that. Certainly so, back in, in those days. It, yeah. It's interesting because um, you've used the term cross-dresser a number of times. And, yes. and in the 80s, that was a, a term that we heard a lot. This is what, um, from my experience, since Simone can back me up on this, uh, we've learned the spectrum, right? The spectrum is now mm -hmm. huge. So cross-dressing or how, however now is part of a spectrum. And within that spectrum, you'll find people that dress. You'll find people that uh, take hormones and dress. You'll find people that may go for the surgery. And yeah. in that, it's become, um, this is a very brave new world we're in right now. All of those males, the very male males that you talked about, you know, in the military and mm -hmm. uh, wives and kids, I personally know a lot of them now. They're sure. friends, and they a lot of them were uh, and are late transitions, which is a whole other subject. It's a different, yeah, different. It's a, yeah. Whole, it's a whole other ball game. This definitely is a brave new world uh, we've entered into, and certainly with your photography, my God, the sky is absolutely the limit to raise awareness and open up minds out there. That is my goal. I mean, I, I've always, you know how I feel about it. I felt like um, I'm a vessel through which certain information comes through. So, you know, um, I have this opportunity and I guess this skill that allows me to, um, to give it, you know, to give back in a way that um, maybe not everybody else is, is what privileged to have. But as, <clears throat> were you gonna say something, Simone? No, yeah, I was just gonna say, because there's a very large community of late stage transitioners, which I'm one of, that is really kind of like an underrepresented and under no, unknown part of yeah. the community. Yeah. yeah, we hear mostly about youth these days and for good mm -hmm. reasons, um, uh, but, um, I mean, it, the colleges and universities and every, everybody has a gender studies program. Right. And everybody wants to take those programs. It's, the truth is, I mean, it's very exciting to people. I think gender variance is, I mean, to me it is. And um, it always has been. And I think it is the wave of the future, frankly. Well, you've got two people here that completely agree with you. Yeah. However, in the rural areas of Pennsylvania, upstate New York and uh, New Jersey, there are uh, things that you can read on Facebook that would absolutely make you keel over that is diametrically opposed to any of the things that we're talking about. Oh, they only recognize two genders and there's not even room. And, and you know what I've learned? I pick and choose my battles. Uh, some of them I can't even be bothered. You're too ignorant, and I, I just can't. Marriott, we have like one minute left. So <laughs> no, I just, um, you, you and I will be talking again. I have a okay. bunch of things to work on because, yeah, you're, you've got so much going on. What's coming up in the future for you? Um, well, I'm having a show in the fall in, in Tampa. Oh, in Tampa, Florida. Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, and I hear that it's a beautiful museum. Of, it's a museum of photography, and I'm having a, a, a show there, I'm happy to say. And it isn't just my trans work. It is trans work. But I always, I have, as you know, a number of series of work. So <clears throat> for the first time ever, I'll be showing uh, flowers and fantasy. 
Oh my God. I, I love, I really love the correlation actually, you know, that you would see flowers, fantasy and people through your eyes in such a way, as you said earlier, you've definitely been given a gift. Yes, I have. I'm, I'm lucky. Yes, you are. And, yeah. and you're really using it uh, for positive things up. Oh. Well, thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you for uh, to our audience. I have just been told we are at our time. And Wendy always takes a picture before she goes. So I know the clock is ticking one. So I kind of find my camera with all of these apps on here. My goodness. Oh, okay, there we go. Everybody look in the camera. Smile. Thank you all. Thank you for thank everybody. You. Thank you. And Mariette, I'll be in touch with you for sure. Thank you again, really. I've been it's been delightful. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.